All right, what is up, you guys? It is me, Vincent, back at it again with another video, uh, with another history video, I might add. Um, now, first thing I want to get into is, um, I don't remember the last time that I uploaded. It was about a week or two ago, but um, I've just been getting kind of sidetracked, and I haven't uploaded in a while. Um. But like I said in my update video, um, I will probably not be posting during um, the week, so Monday through uh, Thursday, because I've got school those days. But Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'll be uh, posting uh, videos all throughout that time. Um, now, another thing that I want to add is when you're viewing my channel and you want to watch... Uh, some of my series, uh, some of my series videos, um, you might find yourself, you know, which one do I watch, you know, because you might find yourself getting confused on which one you want to watch, uh, on which uh, series you want to watch, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to organize all of the series, uh, all of the uh, series videos that I have, uh, my um, Ocean Liner series, my uh, Strange Addiction series, my Walmart series, my uh, Tuesday Talks, all of that is going to be organized into a bunch of public playlists that y'all can view, that y'all can uh, view at your leisure, uh, if you choose to do that, um, so it'll just be a little easier on y'all and on me, if I want to show any of my friends my videos, or anything like that, um, just to kind of heads up on uh, what to expect as uh, this weekend progresses but let's get into the meat the main course of today's video which is going to be about the burning of Georgia and uh, General Lavelle's raid on my hometown Opelika Alabama now my 15 subscribers I think I know some of y'all in real life not to sound creepy but I think I know some of y'all and most of y'all are from this town, and y'all are probably wondering, well, what part did Opelika play in the Civil War? You know, because, I mean, it's it's a small, kind of sleepy town that nobody really ever goes to, um, you know, unless you just recently moved here, um, that nobody really ever goes through. It's just kind of one of those towns that you bypass on your way to Atlanta or Birmingham, um, and you just kind of... It's just one of those towns that you kind of uh, look over, you know? Um, something that you might miss on your travels. Um, but just in case you do miss it, I do encourage you to visit. Because, I mean, it may be a small little town, uh, but it's uh, it's got its charms. It's got some really good, uh, we've got some really good uh, stuff uh, down here. So uh, check that out um, if you can. Um, so... Yeah, um, but like I said, you might be wondering what role the uh, that uh, Opelika played in the Civil War, um, and I will tell you about that, um, about Lavelle's raid, obviously, um, and about the burning of Atlanta, Georgia. So not only will I be talking about General Lavelle, um, or General uh, Rasay, I should say, I should refer to him as his uh, last name, but I will also be talking about... General Sherman's rel uh, relentless march east to the Confederate capital, Richmond. Um, and I'll be talking about that um, a little ways into the video. Um, but enough talk. Let's get started with this video. So, in 1865, so uh, close to the end of the war, like, it's getting really close to the end of the Civil War. The Confederates are very, very desperate. Uh, they're using guns. They're using rickety guns that can barely shoot. They're wearing cl the clothes on their backs. Like, these Confederate troops are in really, really bad shape. The generals aren't doing uh, too hot neither because they've lost morale and there is no winning this war. Now, in the early days of the Civil War, the Confederates won all the battles. 
they actually wore blue uniforms. The Confederates won all the battles. And um, the people up north were like, you know, Abraham Lincoln is not doing a good enough job. You know, because the Confederates are winning all these battles. He's not doing a good enough job as our leader, so he needs to step it up. And that's what he did. And uh, when he did, when Abraham, uh, when Abraham Lincoln really realized that the South was beginning to win the war, and it only lasted about a year, but when he realized that the South was beginning to win the war, he started cracking down on stuff. He uh, initiated the first draft in history. Uh, he drafted young men, uh, young kids, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, my age kids, kids that are younger than me, and I'm 16, kids that are younger than me, he drafted those guys into war service, being drummer boys and being powder monkeys. Uh, he drafted, we didn't draft girls, but uh, girls did volunteer to become nurses and uh, Red Cross volunteers to help the wounded men out in the fields. Um, so just a whole slew of people from all walks of life, northerners, southerners, some blacks fought for the civil, uh, some blacks fought in the civil war, uh, on the northern side, um, so just people from all walks of life, and, um, you know, it raised morale for the American people, mostly up north, and the north began pushing them back. Uh, so fast forward to 1865, so about four years after, um, Lincoln started uh, doing the draft. You, the, the Confederates are really, like, severely outnumbered. Severely outnumbered, outgunned, and yes, they do use the same technology. They use the same tactics sometimes. They use muskets. They use the newly invented grenades. They kind of have the same style, the same tactics, but the Northerners knew what they were doing. The Confederates, now, I'm not a Neo-Confederate by any means, but I've had relatives who fought and died for that flag, who have fought and died protecting their family. Not so much the Southern ideals about slavery, but their families. They were doing this to provide for their families. They were doing this to defend their families. So, um, but, you know, um, the Confederates, they, no offense to them, but they really didn't know what they were doing. The North had all the tactics. The North had all the advantages. It wasn't really about war technology back then. It was more about tactics. Because the North knew what they were doing. The Southerners, all they wanted was slavery and trade. That's all they wanted. And they decided that they would make up the dumb idea to secede from the majority of the United States, to secede from the North, and to create their own country, which failed miserably, failed dramatically. And uh, you're going to see that later in the video. Um, but close to the end of the war, this general, um, Ulysses S. Grant, you can see there are pictures of him on the bottom here. And there's a big picture of him at the top, which I'm going to use for my thumbnail. He sent this guy, William Takuma Sherman, um, and Ulysses S. Grant got a command. Uh, got a, uh, Ulysses got a command straight from the commander in chief of the United States Armed Forces himself, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln told him, "You get our best general. You tell him to march." You tell his men to march and don't stop until you reach uh, Richmond. Y'all don't stop until y'all reach Atlanta. Y'all don't stop until y'all reach Richmond. If you, had to, if you have to send a detachment to these smaller towns to show them what needs to be done, do that. But you do not stop marching. You keep going east. And that's what they did. They marched and they marched, and they marched until they got to until they got to uh, Richmond. They set up their uh, equipment there, and they bombarded it nonstop until the South surrendered. Um, now, when Ulysses S. Grant sent this detachment of troops down to Atlanta, 
They chose their best general, William Takuma Sherman. He had fought in many battles before, and he was one of the best, apart from Ulysses that you can see here, he was one of the best that they ever had the, uh, the privilege of um, fighting with, I guess. Uh, just like Ulysses, um, William was a West Point graduate. He was a master tactician. He was a five-star general, and he knew what he was doing when he took this assignment. And he told his men, keep your morale high. Keep doing what you got to do. Do not stop. You follow my orders. You follow your officer's orders. And you don't stop until we burn, until we burn these cities to the ground. Now, William Sherman, he sent a detachment of his own down to this uh, little town called Opelika, town that I'm from. Now, in 1865, it was under Confederate rule. So, if you were to walk the streets of this town in the 1860s, you'd probably see Confederate soldiers walking with their wives or their children or their entire families, which sometimes consisted of 10, 15 uh, relatives. You would see them walking up and down the streets, you know, just a mix of soldiers, civilians, kid, uh, kids playing in the streets, stuff like that. Now, it was under Confederate rule, and just like Abraham Lincoln uh, said, whatever you've got to do, just like Abraham and Ulysses and Sherman all told each other, they were all like, look, if you got to go to these other towns and snuff them out, do that. We don't care what you have to do. Just get to Richmond and burn it to the ground. And that's what they did. Now, this guy, his name is Lavelle Rousseau. He is also um, a general. That's, that's pretty much all the information that I know about this guy. He is a just your normal, everyday uh, Union general. Now, Sherman told this guy, look... There's this little town in East Alabama. Uh, it's on the way to Atlanta. Now, this town is a Confederate outpost. And it has major, major railroad, uh, railroad ex uh, exports. So I need you to go here and do whatever you need to do to, you know, make an example out of them. Show them what needs to be done. So... And here's another thing that's going to play into the modern day scenario of things. Opelika is still that major railroad export. That's practically our town motto. We, we are a railroad town. We get freight trains running all the time through here. Uh, you can hear them all the time. Uh, if you come to my neighborhood, you can hear them all the time just rumbling through uh, the town. And we've actually got a track running from... Uh, running through Main Street, and it goes right through uh, downtown, so it's pretty cool. Um, and in 1865, it was still a major railroad export, so uh, Opelika was on the way to Atlanta. Uh, it was a uh, little small town in East Alabama, so um, Sherman sent Lavelle uh, down to, uh, Opelika, and what they did is he rounded up his men, and they ripped up the railroad tracks, and they tied them around the trees, made a, uh, got them really hot, made it to where they'd bend really easy, and then they tied them around the trees, so that way when the trains came through, they couldn't go anywhere. All they had to do was stop, because those trains... They would go through Opelika, and they would uh, go, and they would hit Atlanta, and then that's how the uh, Confederates got their supplies and stuff, because they they didn't really stop in Opelika unless they were dropping off passengers. Uh, these freight trains would go through Opelika, and they'd hit Atlanta, and that's how the Confederates got their supplies, and if they kept going, they would hit Richmond. And then that's how the big dogs, the top brass, got their supplies and their weapons and their resources. So they tied these railroad tracks around the trees. And, uh, well, you know, obviously they still had some Confederates there. So um, they killed anyone 
who posed any resistance to them, you know? Uh, and it was mostly soldiers and stuff. All the uh, civilians had evacuated the town when they heard that there was around 2,000 angry Union troops coming to their town to tear up their railroad tracks. So they all evacuated, and of course some of the officers and soldiers of the uh, Confederate detachment in Opelika stayed, and they were obviously killed to make an example out of to show them, hey, you don't mess with us, you know? Um, but they tied him around the trees, and uh, Lavelle later met up with Sherman, and he told Sherman, we did it. The trains won't be able to come through. They won't be able to uh, go to Atlanta, and the South is, and the Confederates are completely cut off. They have nowhere else to go. So, Sherman, he's obviously very happy with this. He's like, all right, um, we've got this little town taken care of, so let's go to Atlanta and burn it to the ground. So they go to Atlanta, and they proceed to burn the entire city down. Like, if you look at pictures of Atlanta after uh, the attack, there are bullet holes everywhere. The city is riddled with bullet holes and cannon shells and empty uh, casings. Um, I could imagine that the smell of gunpowder was just awful. If you were to walk the streets right after the attack, the smell of gunpowder was awful there. Because it still, gu the, the smell of gunpowder still lingers after a while. Um, but they burned the entire town to the ground and after they took uh, and after they took care of Atlanta they did the same thing that they did in uh, Opelika where they ripped up the railroad track uh, where they ripped up the uh, railroad tracks and tied them around the trees then they went on to Richmond and it was there that the Confederates realized they burned down Atlanta they've uh, taken out our main link to Atlanta and Richmond, so we have nowhere else to go, so they had no other choice than uh, surrender or die, which some of them did not want to surrender, and you could only imagine how uh, it would have ended for those people who were unwilling to surrender. Um, but, oh, wrong thing. Uh, where are the pictures? And this is one of the pictures of the city of Atlanta after um, the initial attack, and you can see just the utter carnage, the rubble, just, uh, you know, just complete annihilation of the town. Burned out buildings, abandoned buildings. It was terrible for the Confederates. And you could imagine how much morale they would have lost after seeing their uh, town like this. After seeing the um, Georgian capital like this. And you could certainly realized that once the people in Richmond heard about this, that they were like, all right, you know what? We're done. We're done. We're surrendering because after you, because after what you've done to Opelika, after you, uh, after what you've done to Atlanta, we're done. We're surrendering because we cannot take any more death or grief. Um, and here's another picture of, um, Atlanta. Uh, and what they did here is pretty similar to what they did in uh, Opelika. They ripped up the railroad tracks, tied, uh, tied them around the trees, um, and this is kind of what uh, this is kind of what it uh, looked like. But there were a bit more buildings. It wasn't all just flat land here. And then this is, uh, I think, one of the only pictures that I could find of um, the dismantling of the railroad tracks. Now. Um, Auburn is way bigger than Opelika, way bigger. It's a university, college town, um, and I'll probably make a video about, uh, Auburn and the role that it played in, uh, World War II, not World War II, well, the Civil War also, um, but, um, Auburn actually played kind of a bigger role in the, uh, Civil War because they were a bigger town, um, but, uh, yeah, um, so the Confederates, after all, after all of this, after all of this destruction and carnage and stuff, after, uh, 
Vicksburg and um friggin' what you call it um after uh you know Vicksburg and after all the battles that they lost after Gettysburg after Vicksburg after um all these battles that they had lost Robert E Lee sat up there and he finally said we're done we are surrendering we can't do this anymore and uh, after they surrendered some of these troops some of these Confederate troops had to um walk for miles back to their houses had to walk for miles um back to their homes uh in the south which um you know was bad and sad that rhymed i did not mean for it to rhyme that was unintentional but um yeah that's gonna do it for this video guys i hope y'all learned something from it and um i will see y'all later